Hey everybody, welcome to Dry Fire Monday. This is a little different view than you're used to seeing from me here on our Dry Fire Monday. But we're all, you know, quarantined or social isolating or staying at home uh, for the next couple weeks. So I thought what a heck of a time for us to get some dry fire in. Uh, if you've been paying attention for the new gun owner orientation videos, we'll have another one up tomorrow. But for today, uh, this particular one, if you are a brand new gun owner, put, pass this one by and we'll get you next week. But right now I wanted to introduce you to my dry fire dojo, how I have my space set up and then talk about a great drill that I worked with a student on this past week to eliminate their low left push. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. So yeah, we are all social isolating and I kind of work from home already, not kind of, I do. So it's not really a whole lot of difference for me, but it might be a lot of difference for you. So I wanted to introduce you to kind of how I have my dry fire dojo set up and uh, then kind of give you some stuff. Now, I have these kind of sound deadening things here in my office because I record video in here all the time. The, the uh, green screen that you're used to seeing is over there. We'll be back over there in a minute. But for now, what you see is the side view here. This is the side wall in my office. And the reason that I use this wall is that it is a safe direction. I have block walls in my home. This is a safe direction because if Again, God forbid that I were to, uh, you know, uh, mistake and not unload my pistol correctly and do things wrong and I would shoot a shot, it would go into, through the sheetrock, into the block wall, and it would be okay because nobody would get hurt. I mean, it would stink, it would be wrong, and it would be, you know, an, a, a bad safety violation, but it's not the end of the universe. And so then I have all this set up. I'm going to get out of the way a little bit so you can see a little bit better that I have a couple of IDPA targets here. I have a couple of IPSC targets here, and I have a full-size cardboard target that I have used the back of the white cardboard to draw some smaller targets on some two-inch circles. And then even this little guy right here is the equivalent of a three by five card at seven yards. So if I'm standing in the middle here, which is three yards away, that's the equivalent of a three by five card at seven yards, same as these uh, A zones on the IDPA target. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to do a lot of target transitions. It allows me to do a whole lot in my dry fire in a way that I can get a lot done in a hurry. So I can come in my office, close the doors, get the ammo out, do all those things that we recommend doing, and then get after some dry fire work and uh, then load back up and go. So I have a little shelf here where, you know, for my desk, this is a little desk in my office that I can put all my stuff on, whatever. I tend to keep stuff like my Mantis and, and magazine and all that stuff ready to go so that I can get some dry work in. So maybe you set up a little dry fire dojo in your world. Safe direction like this is best. Now then, I would say though, if your safe direction, you know, you have um, wood construction home, you have a, you know, a frame construction home, maybe uh, setting up a, a bookshelf um, because a handgun bullet for sure will be stopped by several books so, or, you know, or, or, or thick books. So if you set up a bookshelf or something like that, that can act as a safe direction, those kinds of things. Just make sure you're using a safe direction. And then I got these stickers that you can actually peel off and move around and those kinds of things. I'll put a link in the description. Actually, off the top of my head, I forget the name of the website that I got them on. I'll go remind myself and dig through my email when I bought them. And I'll put a link there. I don't have any affiliate relationship or anything like that. But this is how my dojo is set up. So let's get after uh, getting rid of that low left flinch, shall we? Okay, this is a, a lot more how you are used to seeing me <clears throat> in our Dry Fire Monday videos. Okay, fine. We're going to work now on our low left push. For me, as a left-hander, it would be a low right push. And in fact, quick story, had a student that I met last week that was having that exact problem. A left-handed shooter with a pronounced low right push because he's left-handed. And uh, a mutual friend was like, John, we've tried everything. We've looked at, you know, your other videos on grip and those things. And he's just still having this problem. And, and it's just really causing him to be frustrated. So we got together. We looked for five minutes at his Mantis unit uh, numbers that he had. We worked on one drill and we completely got rid of it. And that is the trigger pressure drill. So I'm going to show that to you today so that you can see what's going on. Now, basically what I saw happening is that what I'd see him doing is he'd have this out here and get all the grip that he's going to get on the gun. And then what you see is he go like that and if you watch my muzzle here what happens is that we drop that down like that and that pushes that low and right now if you're running a red dot like this that can be pretty easily seen because you can see the dot move at the end sometimes if you're running irons you can't see that you know benvolio here doesn't have backup irons on uh, my carry gun but 
Uh, you know, for those who do, okay, fine. Uh, so here's how we're going to solve that because what we see all the time is this is a grip issue. People talk about slapping the trigger, but in the reality, what that is, is that is them gripping with their entire hand is what it really is. So what happens is, is that they've got this gun held here and then they go, oh, now squeeze the trigger. And in doing that, oh, they push that gun low and left uh, as a right-hander, low and right as a left-hander. It's what we see happen all the time. So how do we fix that? We fix that with what we call the trigger pressure drill. And that is is. What I'm going to do is I have my trigger finger off. I'm going to get all this. I'm going to go right-handed so that you can see it a little bit easier. And I get every bit of aiming that I'm going to get on this. And then I put a little bit. Oh, I need to reset this trigger so it's a little better for me and easier to see. I'm going to get a little bit of pressure on the trigger and then come off completely. Now what I'm going to really ask myself is how much pressure can I possibly put on this trigger without making it break, without making the trigger drop. So I'm going to put a little pressure on the trigger, come completely off, keep my sights nice and still the whole time because I've gripped this gun well. Now can I put a little more pressure and then off the trigger completely? A little pressure and then off completely. I'll show you what it looks like. So again, I've got all the grip that I'm going to get on this gun. I've watched the grip video. I'm going to press front to back on this one, side to side on the other one, get the gun sitting out there. Okay, fine. Here we are. Everything's good. Now I put a little pressure on the trigger. Good. Now I'm going to go a little more. Good. I'm going to go a little more. Oh, I didn't make it drop. That was good. A little. Oh, this is a gray guns trigger. So it's going to drop and I'm just going to work on that for five or 10 minutes. All we did with my student that day is we worked that drill for like 10 minutes and it was amazing how far it went towards getting rid of his problem. Okay, now let me show you on this Mantis unit here how that might look if you have a Mantis and I'm not saying you have to, okay? All you gotta do is watch your sights on this one and it will work great. But if you did have a Mantis unit, let me show you what that open training, what it might look like, okay? I'm gonna put that down a little bit just so that you can see it. And, and what we're gonna see here, I'm gonna go back to left-handed because it's a little easier for me on that and use my target that is on this side now. I'm gonna use one of my, uh, my IPSC targets. So I'm sitting up here and on it, and what I see students doing all the time is they go here and then they go that, and it goes down into the right. And you can see, terrible shot, right? 29.2, and it says, oh, you might be tightening your fingers. Okay, cool, let's try it again. And I see all this stuff, bang, and I get over there, 50.6, because again, I'm pushing and, and tightening those entire fingers. Now let's look and see what that means for us when I go and look at how my trigger presses were. So if you look at number one, down and right, you can see in the yellow there, <clears throat> that yellow is 150 milliseconds before it drops down and right. Second one straight to the right, and that's pretty common. Now let's go back here, and we are going to again go into our open training, start again, <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get all the grip that I'm gonna get on the gun, straight front to back, straight side to side. See what I'm gonna see, and then a little bit of pressure. Let it go. Little bit of pressure, and you can see my trigger finger coming on and off. Let it go. Let... Oh, there it went, and that was a 98.8. Uh, and I'm not necessarily trying to get it on the third one. I'm trying to say, I'm gonna go to the other hand so you can see my trigger finger a little bit better. Okay, so I get everything that I'm gonna get on here, get my gun gripped nice and tight, little bit of pressure, let go. Little bit more. Don't. Uh, can I make that much without the gun going off? I did. Little more. Little more. Oh, that one was good. Little more. And it broke at 93.8 with my non-dominant hand. So, if you don't, you know, I just want you to see the fact that when we do that, we see it again and again. I'm gonna go back left because it's easier for me. Little pressure. Now, here's the more advanced version of this drill. You don't take your finger off the trigger between each one. You just simply build the pressure slowly, slowly, slowly. Next version of this drill, I build the pressure slowly, 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 and then it finally breaks. 92.2, not too bad. Okay, again, let's try it one more time. Slowly, 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 and when it breaks, 95.7, that's really good. So I'm just continuing to build. Then as I continue on, if I want to keep doing that, then I might move to a drill like the compressed surprised break on Mantis, but even here on open training, I can get as much grip as I'm going to get on the gun, and I can go, now I'm going to press through without stopping. I'm not going to, I'm going to press through with more authority and keep it where it is. Now that lowers it down to about 92 or 90.9, 97.9 there, because I held up at the very end. So what you can see here is, is that drill will make you so much better. So your week this week is just working on that trigger pressure drill. If you're really struggling with that low left push as a right hander, low right push as a left hander, I want you to really think about a little bit of pressure, let it off, 
little bit more pressure, let it off. A little bit more while that site stays nice and easy. You can use your Mantis unit if you have one, and this would be a great investment right now, guys, because you may not get that out to the range. There's no ammo to buy right now anyways. So go buy a Mantis unit so then that way you can dry fire and you can get this kind of feedback really fast. Then again, a little more, little more, little more, and get it at the very end. There you saw that one 73.6. I'm not paying attention to my sights or nothing and one-handed and all that. But uh, the point is, is you can get that again and again and again. And this drill, if you just did this five minutes a day for the next three weeks, you will completely eliminate your low left or low right push, depending on which shooter you are. I hope that helps you guys. I think it'll make you a better shooter this week. Take care and be kind to one another this week. I know I'm in a t-shirt too. We're sitting here, you know, socially isolated and those kinds of things. So let's be kind to one another online and we'll see you in your dry fire.